So here are 10 songs that taught me metal from easy to ah. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, I don't actually know if I can play the last song yet. Why? Because some metal is freaking hard. At least it is for me. But not all metal is soul crushingly hard. This was the first metal song that felt doable to play as a beginner, but still made me feel like a badass. This simple riff teaches the single most important skill you'll ever learn as a bassist. If you can do it, you'll be a solid bassist that people want to play with, even if you can't play flashy. If you can't do it, no one will want to play with you. That skill? Laying down solid root notes. Bob Daisley plays a ton of great riffage on the rest of this tune, but he knew when to lay down a foundation of simple roots and support Ozzy's vocal and Randy's amazing guitar. But let's face it, it's more exciting to play a full-on noty bass riff where your fingers have wiggling to do, like in song number two. If you're new to bass, this riff will test your clumsy fretting fingers. Because when you first start playing bass, your fingers are just all over the place. And if you don't get them under control, then the riff's gonna sound like this. And a lot of metal goes way faster than this, so if you don't get your technique down, you will die. Okay, probably not, but you'll have to return your sweet leather pants to Salvation Army. And don't even attempt song number three, where clean fretting technique is non-negotiable. Most guitarists and bassists have played this at some point, most bassists, including me, actually got it wrong. If you watch Tony Iommi play this on guitar, you might think you should play this riff with hammer-ons where you smack the ninth fret notes with your fretting hand without plucking. But Geezer Butler doesn't hammer them on, he plucks every note. Because if you hammer those notes, the ninth fret notes would get a little lost in the mix and not feel as driving as all plucked. So nailing Paranoid meant I could officially play stuff that sounded cool to normies, but I wanted to take it to the next level, and I had a problem. When I found harder riffs I couldn't play, I felt like a bass fraud. Okay, real talk, I struggle with imposter syndrome, like, kind of a lot. And it's really easy to when you compare yourself to stuff like this. And the thing is that no matter what level you're at, you can always find somebody to compare yourself to that makes you feel inadequate. I've been playing for 20 years and I still struggle with this constantly. Honestly, I've avoided even making a metal video for you because I'm like, who the hell am I to make a metal video? But instead of letting that feeling win, I'm gonna tackle it head on by learning this song number 10, which I currently can't play at all. And I really hope that I can figure it out. I got 60 days to learn it and I hope that I can. Learning metal has been a struggle for me since day one because metal has a history of challenging shred-tastic bass work, including this riff from one of the original badasses of metal bass on song number four. Because there's a trick to smashing this riff like Dave Ellison that I was totally missing back in the day. The key to nailing his sharp cutting bass tone and making it through those quick changing notes wasn't actually a key, it was a pick. That's right, to really nail metal bass, we gotta navigate the old pick versus fingers debate. You must play metal with a pick. Nope, nope, nope. You must play metal with your fingers. Not true either. There's no actual debate. Pick and fingers are different tools with different characteristics. I struggled to really nail this riff back in the day because I was using the wrong tool for the job. It's like, okay, but the pick just makes the bass tone cut so much more. And in some circumstances, the pick makes it easier to play fast, which I think it does on those quick high notes. And Dave Ellison agrees. I, of course, play it with a pick. If you dare to try it with your fingers, good luck. But you don't have to use a pick to play fast and get cutting tone. There are ways to get there with fingers alone, like the bassist in song number five. <laughs> This song kicked my ass. Playing this fast and having intelligible notes come out took a ton of work. And guess what saved the day? Working my boring, boring scales up to speed. I know they're not the most exciting thing to play, but check it out. Scales are just a specific bunch of notes we pick from the 12 notes of the musical alphabet. And by practicing common scale patterns, 
can shortcut your way to learning a ton of riffs, including this one. Scales are used in all kinds of music, from ye old timey days of Bach, to ye modern timey days of Bieber. Even song number 10 that I probably can't even fucking play uses scales. Steve Harris of Iron Maiden claims he doesn't really know any theory and he just goes by ear, but basically every Maiden riff uses the minor scale, from The Trooper, to Wrathchild, to Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, God, I just want to play Maiden all day now. So you might look at this Aces High riff and think, OMG, there's so many notes. And yes, there are, but if you know the E minor scale, then you've already practiced playing all of these notes in order. So you're not really learning from scratch, even from the beginning. But you don't have to follow the rules of scales to make killer heavy riffs. Check out song number six. So what the hell are those notes? Remember that thing I said about scales from Bach to Bieber and you cringed at me? Well, it's true, but there's something sort of special about metal. Because metal carries the energy of punk rock's just fucking play mentality, there's a tradition of weird riffs like this one that don't really fit a scale, they just sound cool and weird. By the way, maybe you're wondering why this one is song number six, because that riff isn't that hard. Well, it's because when I first learned this, I thought the bass followed the guitar on that next crazy riff. But it turns out Tom Araya totally did not play that. He just did this. Basically played the Jaws theme on a Slayer song. But I had no idea back in the day because the bass is so just buried in the mix on that song. Have you noticed that? Maybe because it was super sloppy. Check it out. <laughs> That's not the riff. <laughs> This is pre-Pro Tools, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if only he'd taken my beginner to badass course where he could have learned technique and timing from a real pro. <laughs> I can't commit to this joke. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of burying myself in the mix here on YouTube, because if I make a mistake, you're gonna hear it and leave a mean comment about it. So I'm pretty nervous to try to nail Racer X for song number 10 still. So I've been practicing Scarified song number 10, probably not as much as I should, because I still can't really play it. and I've got a week until I shoot this video. Shit, if I can't play this riff, then I can't finish the video and I don't really have a backup plan. So I guess I need to practice. I'm gonna do some like road testing on it at full speed today and see what happens. <laughs> oh my God. I, I actually don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. That was not very long ago, so we'll see what happens when I try it today. But here's a song I can nail some clean shreds on, song number seven. You probably don't realize how hard it is to actually pull this off like John Myung. Super fast string crossing with multiple plucking techniques and an altered tuning. And somehow he pulls it off flawlessly, even live. The beautiful, shiny haired bastard. But honestly, while I've always salivated over super clean players like John Myung, my heart belongs to more balls out, down and dirty rockers, especially the bassist in song number eight. what metal bass could be. He was heavily influenced by the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, a renowned metalhead from the late Baroque period. So Cliff copied some of his moves, drawing on scales and arpeggios in a similar way to create beautiful melodic bass. If we drop the distortion, you can hear this intro is a very simple D minor arpeggio, meaning the first, third, and fifth notes from the D minor scale, leading to a C major arpeggio, the one, three, five of the C major scale. It's totally in the Bach ballpark, the Bach park. You're welcome. When Cliff first did this, it was a huge innovation in metal. But now you can easily just rip off his innovations and come up with beautiful, melodic sounding stuff, just experimenting with different major and minor arpeggios. Throw in some distortion, like Cliff liked to use, and it sounds super badass. It's almost time to see if I can nail song number 10, 
but first I'll get warmed up on some of the most brutal plucking speed I've ever attempted, song number nine. This is the most deceptively hard Maiden riff. The notes are easy, it's just G, F, and C, but keeping up on gallops at that speed for that long, it's like insanely hard and I don't know how Steve Harris still does it at his age. You have to stay really relaxed even though the intensity of the song gets you all pumped up. So I'm gonna try to stay relaxed now because it's time for song number 10. That bass solo at the end of the section always kills me. Uh, my palms are literally sweating. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I did it! I did it! Oh, 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 it wasn't great, but I'm gonna call it a B minus. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Here's another lesson. I'm gonna go lay on the floor. <laughs>